turn with me to the book of Genesis that's on the screen. We're going to be starting from verse number 9. When you have it, say amen. amen. This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man. The only blameless person living on earth at the time. He walked in close fellowship with God. Jump down to verse 11. Now God saw that the earth had become corrupt and was filled with violence. God observed all this corruption in the world for everyone on earth, that's including my God, us today, was corrupt. <laughs> Thank you for your grace. So God said to Noah, I have decided, I have decided to destroy all living creatures for they have filled the earth with violence. Yes, I will wipe them all out along with the earth. Verse 14 says, build a large boat from cypress wood and waterproof it with tar inside and out. Then construct decks and stalls throughout its interior. Make the boat 450 feet, 70 feet long, 75 feet wide, 45 feet high, leaving 18 inch opening below the roof all the way around the boat. Put the door on the side and build three decks lower, middle, and upper, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, outer court, inner court, and holy of holiness. Come on, y'all. Look, I am about to cover the earth with the flood that will destroy every living thing that breathes. Everything on earth will die. Verse 18 says, but I will confirm my covenant. Thank you, Holy Ghost, with you. So enter the boat, you and your wife and your sons and their wives. I'm going to stop right there. Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for this mm, kingdom moment. Thank you for what you're about to say and do. Touch somebody's life. Strengthen them. Save somebody's soul. Reclaim every backslider. Anyone that's discouraged, Father God, help them leave out encouraged. Reverse every curse. Give us ears to hear with. Mm. Help us, Father God, to receive revelation straight from heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said... You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. As I stated last week, and I won't go over entirely from last week, you can get the CD or the DVD or go online and look at it. Who builds, as I said last week, a boat in the desert? Who hammers away for 120 years on something they might not never need? He didn't know that if he was going to need that. He just did what God told him to do. Sometimes you just got to do it. God ain't going to tell us all the answers. Come on, somebody. Sometimes you just got to trust them. Who beats, who bets their entire future on something that has never happened before? Based on this time, Noah had to grow trees and so forth. And after they were fully grown, he then cut the trees and saw them into planks and built the ark. Noah understood that this wasn't a sprint, that this was a marathon. It's going to require to do the things that God has called and commissioned the body of Christ as a whole and individually it's going to require, church, laser focus. Some of the things that God has dropped in your spirit that you are inspiring to do, it's going to require laser focus. And you have to prepare yourself to understand it's not something that's going to happen immediately. Some things God will allow to materialize immediately. Other things God will stretch it out because God is trying to prepare you for where he's taking you. Let me say that again. Some things God will allow to happen that you're called to do immediately. Other things God will stretch it out. And so you as a people of God has to understand that walking with God is a marathon. Get that image in your life, church. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. My God, many people start out the gate going hard for Christ. And then they burn out because they didn't prepare themselves for all the trials and tribulations. They didn't count up the costs. And all the things that you're going to have to endure. The Bible says all those that desire to live godly shall suffer persecution. Can I tell you that in Psalms 119.71, the psalmist says, Sister Jackie, it was good for me that I was afflicted. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. My affliction caused me to submit and surrender to your decrees. There is a port of affliction attached to your purpose. As I told y'all before, there's a crisis, my God, before the crown. Come on, Jesus had a crisis. My God, he was beat all night. Come on, somebody, disfigured. 
before he got to victory on Calvary. You have to prepare yourself for the marathon. Now, I want to correct myself, and thank you, Minister Francetta. My God told us last week that Noah named the animals. As I began to restudy, my God, Noah did not name the animals. Adam named the animals. But my God, God sent the animals to Noah to, my God, sustain the animals. So I stand corrected on that right there. And as I begin to read again, I asked the church, where did he get the tools and so forth from? Well, as I begin to study, thank you again, Minister Francetta, for covering your pastor. Over there in chapter 4, verses um, that like 23, he began, uh, Tubel, he became an expert in forging tools and bronze and iron and so forth. So God had everything strategically put together. But as I was reading chapter 3 of Genesis, that, to me, is the most important, one of, if not the most important, scripture in the Bible. Other than when you bring it to the New Testament, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, we'll become a new creation in Christ and all that stuff. But this is where everything went haywire. Chapter 3, Berry of Genesis. When the woman and the man was deceived and tricked into disobeying the commandment of God in their lives. And so when God asked Noah to do something that had not been done, he had never seen rain. He never visually, I guess, seen a boat. But he built by faith. And so that is the title of the sermon. You got to build it by faith. There's some things that God has called you personally to build, but it's going to take faith. On how many tongues you speak in, on how much scripture you know, it's going to take faith. And then when you're building in faith, you got to make sure you build it on a firm foundation. Because that what God has called you to build will be tested. <laughs> Everything that is of God will be tested. That's what we as a people of God don't want to be. We don't want to be tested. <laughs> oh, my God. But it's good when God come and inspect, oh my God, my God, that which you are building. Because you want, my God, the great expert builder that God is to inspect your work, Pastor Tedrick. My God, because then when he inspected and he signed off on it, that means you can continue to forge on through. Because he has passed the uh, test. So ask yourself, can your lifestyle outside of church pass the test? Is your life built on a firm foundation outside of the four walls today? And so Noah, as I told y'all last week, my God, point number one was he had to have total trust because he really had no cognitive understanding, my God, of what God had asked him to do. But he had to obey God. And the Bible says that Abraham, I mean, that Noah did everything that God asked him to do. So he was obedient, but he had to trust. You can't tell me you got faith because faith, my God, is mixed with trust. Oh, my God, if you don't trust God, you're not going to have faith in the things of God. Oh, my God, I told y'all last week they kiss one another. Faith and trust kiss one another. You show me a man or woman that got some trust, I'll show you a man or woman that got some faith. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God. Many of us want to have faith, but we don't trust God unless we see it with our natural fleshly carnal eyes. If you're going to do great things in God, you got to see the impossible and you got to see the invisible. You got to be able to see it, my God, in the spirit and not in the flesh. That's why the Bible says we walk by and not by everything God going to do, baby. He ain't going to show you in the, in the natural. I'm going to take my time because I feel real good. <laughs> the things that God is going to do in your life, the things that you're going to see manifest, that business, my God, that marriage being restored, those kids coming up out of hell, I can't get nobody to say nothing. Whatever you got going on, you got to believe God by faith. And some of us got, my God, right now, the things that is on top of you, the things that is in all of our lives, my God, some of it is done and it ain't the devil. Some of it because God is trying to enlarge your faith. He's trying to increase your capacity, my God, because where you're going, my God, our capacity is not large enough to handle where we're going. And so God got to put us in the fire and so that we, our faith, my God, and our capacity can be enlarged. It's a purpose in everything. We good at quoting Romans 8, 28, all things are working together for the good to those that love God. And so when God starts working out his perfect will in your life, oh, we start kicking and screaming. Come on, somebody. We start leaving the church and quit showing up to 12 groups and dropping out of class and all that. But you said that you wanted to do great things for God. You said that you wanted that business. You said that you wanted your relationship back, my God, with your husband or your wife. You said, my God, that you want to see your children, my God, the relationship increase and be better with you. You said, guess what God uses? 
trials and tribulation. When God wanted to spread the gospel in the book of Acts, when they was up in the upper room, come on somebody, oh my God, he sent persecution and the church went abroad, come on somebody, oh when God want to do a work, he will allow persecution. If he don't send persecution, he'll send a famine, come on somebody, God has a way of using that what we call, my God, trials and pain to, to execute his will in your life. That's why if you read the word, my God, and you understand how God operate, my God, when you read the word, you'll understand God's ways. God don't always use good things. Come on. God will use anything. I can't get nobody to say nothing to execute his will. And sometimes when you find yourself drifting, when you find yourself drifting away from God, God got to send a little something to get your attention. I call it, my God, he'll wink at you, my God. A wink could be good and a wink could be bad. Come on, somebody. And so we talking about building on faith. Abraham, Manoah had to build by faith. And you're going to have to do the things, my God, that God has asked you to do by faith. If you're going to be a possessor, come on, Joshua, I'm speaking that in the atmosphere. If you're going to have that Joshua mentality, you're going to have to be possessors by faith. You can't do it. It's not by my might nor by my power, but by his spirit, said the Lord. Some of the things that you and I are trying to do, you're trying to do it through the flesh. And it ain't going to happen, baby. Come on, somebody. Some of the hangups and habits that you and I are dealing with, you're going to have to come down here and sacrifice it. The altar means sacrifice. You're going to have to kill some things. Oh, my God. There's a place inside of you that only God can feel. Come on. You're trying to fill it with all this worldly stuff. Come on, somebody. And you're still, my God, unsatisfied. Oh, you got to submit and surrender, my God, to God. And then when you submit and surrender to God, then you got to allow God to start the process of, my God, building your faith. Somebody give God a hand. Oh, my God, Pastor. And so, and my God, so we're going to move to point number two. After trust, you got to move to some obedience. Trust leads you to obedience. As I told y'all, it took 18 and a half years after I gave my life to Christ. I didn't try to create a calling. I walked into my calling. As I told y'all before, I wasn't thinking about being no pastor. I was just glad that I was free from prison and glad that I wasn't strung out of game banging no more. And as I just began to serve God, my God, I just began shaking this walk right into that what God has called me to do. I didn't do like Lenny taught us in class this morning. I stayed submitted to the process. When you're walking with God, you got to submit to the process. When you and I try to sidestep the process, come on, somebody, then you start trying to create an Ishmael instead of waiting on the promise. Some of the things that you're going to aspire and attain in God, you got to just walk. Because, my God, if God allow you to sidestep the process, if God allow you to skip steps, my God, you're going to miss some lessons along the way. Some of the things you're going to pick up along the way, you're going to need for where you're going. Come on, somebody. Some of the people you're going to pick up, my God, you're going to need them where you're going. Some of the people that's going to drop off, they weren't supposed to go no way. So you got to just sit back and enjoy the process. And part of the process, that means you got to have faith. Because it takes faith to just sit back and just wait on the process. You got to understand, you ain't got to be busy. Just because you're busy don't mean you're in God's will. Just enjoy the process. Come on, somebody. And that what God called you to do, he'll start having you do it. The people that you're supposed to meet along the way, he's going to send them to you. Purpose will always meet you. When you're in purpose, purpose will meet you in purpose. I can't get you nobody to say nothing right there. Oh, don't step out of the square, stay in the square, and let God send to you what he's supposed to send to you. Because God's will is perfect, and you only want what God has for you. You want the perfect will of the Father in your life. Many of us are scarred right now because we stepped out of the will of the Lord. Many of us is frustrated right now because we have stepped out of the will of the Lord. And we talking about win, God, win. I'm seeing everybody else get married when I'm going to get married. I'm seeing everybody else get promoted on the job. Matter of fact, they used me to train my, my God, the person that now, my God, got the job that I wanted. Win, God, win, win, my God. God said, mm, your time ain't came yet. Come on, just wait on God. You got to trust God. And while you're trusting God, you got to stay obedient. God says in his word that he shows himself faithful. To those who are faithful. Just remain faithful, body of Christ. Amen. Everything that God got for you, he got for you. Come on, somebody. And so let's talk about some total obedience. I like that. Look at point one, total trust. And then you got to have total obedience. We got to get that spirit of compromise up out of our mind. We got to quit trying to do it our way. And you got to pray that God don't allow that Absalom spirit to interfere with purpose. Absalom was David's son. He wanted to steal the kingdom. He didn't want to go through the process. When our life is over, church, my God, the world would ask, 
Did they, meaning you and I, do what we were supposed to do? That's why I thank God for the discipleship classes that we have here at Going Hall for Christ Church and understanding your purpose and your potential. I told y'all, as a young man of God, I need you to discover, and there's things in place in the church. It's one thing for me to tell you, Brother Brian, I need you to discover your purpose. Another thing is sitting up under me to have things in place to help you to discover your purpose. And we have everything in place to help you to discover your purpose. Why do I need you? To discover your purpose. Because as I taught Mother Margaret, my God, and evangelist, people that, my God, understand who they are and what they're called to do, you don't have to pastor them. You lead them. Right. You pastor people who don't know who they are. Yes. Yes. By now, if you've been sitting in this ministry, ministry for any length of time, you ought to have been in your mind ceased from wondering. Yes. You shouldn't be doing this in the spirit realm, nor even in the natural. People that know who they are and know what they're called to do, they walk with laser focus. They study with laser focus. They pray with laser focus. They know when this, this ain't it. They know when that ain't it. They know when he ain't it. They know when she ain't it. Come on, somebody. I can't get one. People, a purpose. Mmm, my God. That's why, my God, purpose will help guard you against being disobedient. When you know what you're called to do, you line your life up to that which you're called to do, and it keeps you a boundaries to a degree. It keeps you focused and walking in the process of where God is taking you. People are going to ask, my God, did they do what they were supposed to do? And it isn't going to be answered by words, but by lifestyle. And when I was thinking about that, Mama Donna, from last week, I done done a lot of home-going services. Some was funeral and some ones were home goings. There's a difference, and I won't mess with it, from a funeral and a home going. But I began to try to reflect back and think about some of the home goings, even the funerals for my religious folks. Some of the funerals that, and home goings that I was privileged to do. And it's only one person that I can think of. I said one that I can think of. That when I did the home going, when I looked back over his life, he died in purpose. The late Dr. Miles Rowe, Morgan, Sister Morgan, tells us to return back to God empty. Just like Dr. Miles and Dr. Ruth returned back empty. God knew that those two could not co I mean, live on this earth without each other, so he allowed them to be taken at the same time. I thank God for the doctor. Woo, thank you, Dr. Miles. Well, you're imprinted and imprinted. Oh, my God, stamped my life. But when I think about Mr. Sidney, that's who the Spirit of God brought to my life. He answered, my God, when it says, did they do what they was called to do? He did what he was called to do. Oh, my God, he got his family to me. He got his grandkids to me. He got his daughter and sons to me. My, he got his sister to me. He got his nieces and nephews to me, my God. Because if it had not been for him coming to the ministry, Mama Donna and Kia and Toya and Dominique and, Ta and uh, 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 Dinesha, none of them would be here, my God. But on top of that, my God, I didn't even get an opportunity to preach his home going because the people that came up preached it for me. So when I stepped in the pool pit, I said, what can I say? Y'all didn't see it at all. That's what you call a life well lived. And there's many people that were sitting at his home going that were saved because of his lifestyle outside of the church. Somebody give God a hand. So ask yourself, my God, if you were to cross over now, I didn't say tomorrow, I said now. That means fall over in your seat right now. What would people say about you? Then take it a little farther. Are you ready to hear a job well done? So please do me a favor. Don't leave up out of the house of the Lord without being sure that you are ready. Because the knock, knock may come at any given time. And y'all know my heart as a young soldier, my God, for the king is to see your life blessed and to know that you are saved. It's one thing to confess. It's another thing to confess and believe. Many people confess Christ, but not many of them believe what they just confessed. It says, confess and believe, and then you shall be saved. Many people leave out the belief. Belief will change your life. Are y'all with me so far? Noah built the ark because God commanded him to, church. It's what he was supposed to be doing. 
Sawing planks and hammering nails were acts of his obedience. Noah's one act of obedience took 43,080 days, 800 days. The harder it is, the longer it takes, y'all. The harder it is. I know it seems real hard right now. But sometimes when it takes long, and you got to have laser focus and keep dealing with it. My God, sometimes when it don't happen quick, that means you got to stay on your face. That means you got to do greater research. Come on, that means you got to fast some more. But see, why God, while you're trying to birth that natural thing, God is birthing something spiritually in you. Yeah. Oh, my God, because everything ain't just natural, baby. So that what you're trying to be, oh, my God, it may take a long time, but he's doing two things. He's working on you naturally, and you're working on you spiritually. At the same time, because you want, you want to be built to last. You don't want to be the type of Christian that start out the gate strong, but then you burn out six months or three years later. You don't want to live holy for six months, and then you start living in habitual sin the next six months. Come on, somebody. God is trying to anchor your soul and build you on a firm foundation. But God is also, my God, would extend something because he's trying to train us how to be obedient. If you allow everything, Minister Jason, to happen immediately, that's not helping us with our obedience. Ask yourself, can you build something long term? Can you stay consistent long term? Can you stay on one project like Noah did long term? Or are you the type of person that once you get going, you got to go to something else? You lose interest real quick. That's another reason why a lot of people are dwarfed in the spirit as Christians. Because they can't build long term. They can't stay focused long term. The word of God says those that endure to the end. You got to be able to endure to the end. Sometimes you got to build for 120 years. Sometimes, my God, you might have to build something for 20 years before it manifests in the 21st year. And see, for 20 years, that's a long time in the natural. Come on, somebody, but you got to be able to build, and you got to be able to build consistently. And when you know what God has called you to do, my God, it helps you be obedient to that what God has called you to do. Let me say that again. When you know what you're called to do, it helps you be obedient to that what God has called you to do. And so that means that the pythons that come to bite you and paralyze you, the voices that's hissing at you, who, my God, the distractions, Father God, my God, that's coming your way, my God, won't interfere because God, you know what God has told you to do. Many people have shipwrecked in the faith because they was not sure, my God, get deemed from it. They was not sure, my God, that what God has called them to do. Obedience guards your life. Are y'all listening to me, church? I'm taking my time and flowing because I need this to get deep down in your soul. Okay, are y'all with me so far? Do me a favor and give God a hand. Give me a favor and give God a hand. As I said, Noah's one act of obedience took 40, 43,000 days. The harder it is, the longer it takes, and the more God is glorified. Noah built the ark exactly. We're talking about obedience. Noah built the ark exactly, my God, how God instructed him. Write down Exodus 25 and 9. Let's look at this. Exodus 25 and 9. Exodus 25 and 9. You must build. This is God talking to Moses. I'm good. You must build this tabernacle and its furnishing exactly according to the pattern I will show you. Come on, somebody give God a hand. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Exodus 25, 9, you must build this tabernacle. God is talking to Moses, my God, and it's furnishing exactly according to the pattern. See, God builds. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I don't know why y'all gave me this mic. I was taking my time, Jackie. My God, God, my God, asked you to do stuff, but you got to build it according to the pattern. Oh, y'all listen to me. Don't miss the revelation. You have to build according to the pattern. And so, my God, you will never know how, my God, to build something if you don't go get it first in the spirit. Come on, somebody. You got to get it in the spirit. You got to ask God to show you, my God, by the by vision. Sight is where you at vision is where you're going my God you got to build according to the pattern that God has shown you so ask yourself what has God asked you to do that he has told you to build it according to the pattern see many of us don't build according to the pattern because we ain't sure what God told us to do and then we're not desperate enough and hungry enough, my God, to go find out in God's presence. Oh, my God, I was at a conference, my God. Oh, my God, you got to get the fire. Oh, my God, at Bishop Cooper when he was ordained as a bishop, Pastor Cooper from World War for Christ. And one of the bishops said, you got to go get the fire off the altar. Oh, my God, you got to go get that revelation off the altar. You got to go get that fire off the altar. Come on. You got to go get your vision off the altar. And he told Moses to build according, my God, to the pattern that I will show you. What has God showed you, my God, that you have talked yourself out of? What have God asked you to do, my God, and that you said that ain't God? 
My God, come on, somebody. And you can't say it's vision, my God, if it's too little. Vision is big. Come on, vision is big, my God. And so, therefore, God would ask you to do some things that would blow your natural mind. Oh, then when he do it, my God, then you'll move over there, my God. He'll say, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither have it entered to the heart of man the things that God has in store for those that love him. You got to position yourself. You say, God, I want you to blow my mind. God, I need you to increase my vision. Lord, I need you to take me way out there, my God. Oh, my God, I need you, my God, to take me way out there. I got to see real far. As Bishop McIntosh taught us, an eagle go a thousand feet up in the air, but he can see a thousand feet down. Oh, my God, you got to have that type of laser focus. Sometimes you got to go higher so you can see father who am I talking to in the church my God but when God give you the revelation you got to build it according to the pattern quit trying to do stuff your way and do it the way God told you to do it Noah built the ark line upon line precept upon precept Noah did everything that the Lord told him to do and the way God told him to do it come on somebody and so therefore you can't be keep you cannot keep trying to sidestep that's why many of us is frustrated and that's why we're not seeing the manifestation of God's promises my God manifest in the natural because we're trying a shortcut we're trying to negotiate with God you can't negotiate with God if God said do it this way that's what he meant my God I don't care what society is saying I don't care what's going on in the White House and come on somebody oh my God the White House don't control the kingdom oh my God you got to understand we serve a king and oh my God in his kingdom my God come on somebody and so therefore you got to do things the way God told you to do it my God if you're going to see the results do it the way God told you to do it mm. do it the way God told you to do it Noah built and did everything that God told him to do According to the pattern that God showed him. My God. who I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Now write down Hebrews chapter 8 verse 5. God gave him this warning. Be sure that you make everything according to the pattern I have shown you here on the mountain. Make sure that you make everything according to the pattern. God is speaking this afternoon. What has God showed you that he told you to do? What is God asking you to do that you are trying to negotiate and talk yourself out of doing? What has God asked you to build? Oh, I'm going to take my time, my God. I've got a few more minutes. What is God asking you to build that, my God, and you're trying to build it the way you want to build it? Because you, it don't make sense to your natural mind. you like, man, how can I do this, man? And that don't even make sense, God. Come on, come on, who am I talking to? My God, we have told ourselves that I can't do it like that. I got to do it like this. And you know why we do that? Because we need, my God, we have to be able to build it according to our own finite mind. But you got to be able to trust God with your life. Mm. In Genesis 6, 18, God established, my God, and my God, in Genesis 6, 18, God is establishing and confirming his covenant. Oh, my God, I told y'all God is a God of covenant. Oh, when you accept Christ, you're entering into a covenant. Oh, that's why I told y'all, God showed me early on, many people are doing church and they're not doing Christ. Oh, they go to church, they can tell you all about church, but they can't tell you nothing about the God who died and rose up for the church. Who am I talking to? And so you got to understand, you got to move to covenant. As I taught y'all before, you can't be on contract with God. There is no contracts with God. Oh, you're either in covenant or you're not in covenant. Either you for God or you're not for God. You got to ask yourself, where am I at concerning covenant? Contracts are made to be broken. You can sign a contract and if somebody comes and offer you some more money you are this you are you avoid that contract and you'll pick up another contract but when you're in covenant there's blood my god that's what has to do with blood covenant when you're in covenant with god my god there's a life that had to be sacrificed that's what christ did on Christ. when you're in covenant with god you don't get to pick and choose when you obey god when you're in covenant with god your assignment would detail when the time is up my god god had an assignment my god and if he wasn't in covenant with himself he would have quit on calvary or he said my flesh don't want to go but he said nevertheless not my will but thy will be done see when you ain't covenant you talk like that when you think like that when you ain't covenant though you're frustrated come on somebody though you don't understand <laughs> oh my god things don't look good and sound good they don't even taste good but because you ain't covenant oh you can't quit because then you'll realize that god didn't quit on you the bible says he sweat great drops of blood the bible says he crawled come on somebody to calvary even a woman with the issue of blood she said if i could just get to the hem of his garment i shall be made whole many of you are serving god on contract if you can 
but God is a God of covenant. When he brought the children of Israel up out of Egypt, he said, I'm going to release you from this physical front row. You used to being told what to do, how to do it, and when to do it by this physical man. And so I'm going to let you stop in the wilderness, and I'm going to retrain you. Come on, somebody. One of the hardest things to do with people, my God, is help them unlearn wrong truths. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. And so God made them stop off into Egypt, and he said, I got to retrain you. And so I'm going to feed you from, from heaven with food, and I'm going to cause water to come up out of a rock, because God was trying to bring them vertical, because they was used to dealing with furrow, they were used to going horizontal, and now they ain't got no physical furrow. Now you God is trying to train them to go vertical, my God. That's what covenant consists of. The first thing that you should do when you have having problems, you should go to God. Oh my God, the second thing that you should do when you have having problems, you should go to God. Your first thought when you're going through stuff and you don't understand something, you should go to God. Don't go to your pastor. Don't go to your first lady. Go to God. People on contract are trying to go to somebody else. They need men to tell them what to do. You better learn how to go get it from God. You better get that vision, that revelation, that fire, that strength. Come on. From God. Learn how to go to God. That should be your first thought. God told them, my God, uh, uh, I gave them a warning. But so you got to understand about covenant. Please, my God, ask God to increase your life concerning covenant. Covenant, 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 my God. I had a, I made my mind up. I told myself that I'm going on to see what the end of a saved life going to be like. And you know what that comes from? Covenant. At the time God gave me that in that six by nine prison cell, I didn't even know what covenant was all about, Sheila. Oh, my God. But I knew I was prophesying something <laughs> that I'm going on, my God, to see what the end of a saved life going to be like. Oh, my God. Do you understand how that thought <laughs> and those words just kept me in the midst of hell? Come on, somebody. When everybody counted me out, God counted me in. When things didn't look right, sound like, come on, somebody. Oh, because I made that commitment. You told me, God said, that you was going on to see what the end of a saved life going to be like. See, I ended into a covenant way back in 1998 when God saved me in that prison cell and I ain't never went back to game banging. I ain't never went back to my former way of life. I have never returned to my vomit. Come on somebody. Oh I ain't gonna vomit up nothing and go back and lick it up. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Covenant to keep you in obedience. Covenant to keep a real yes down in your soul. Covenant to make the devil back up my God. Covenant to make you worship God. Covenant to drive you to the holiness of holiness my God. Covenant to drive you to his word my God. Oh my God in God I live and in God I move and then God I have my very being you got to become a covenant people God is all about covenant church that's the only thing that he's going to receive when you honor God with your 10% you are honoring the covenant oh my God when you give seed into the ground when it rained God caused the harvest don't you know when God closed up the heavens in the old testament that was a curse on the land many of us my God the heavens is closed over our life because we serving God on contract we're picking and choosing you can't give God what you want to give God you got to give God what he demands he demands 10% my God if you make a thousand dollars you got to give God a hundred dollars not 99.9 that's covenant baby covenant people talk different they pray different, they think different, they walk different. Who am I talking to in the church? Many of you don't understand me because you don't understand this covenant that I'm in with God. Build according to the pattern. Build according to what I showed you. What has God showed you? Do it the way God told you to do it. Noah built the boat according to the pattern. Moses built according to the pattern. Noah built according to the pattern. Abraham followed God by faith. Jesus said, I only do what, I, what the Father do. I only say what the Father say. Covenant. Everything's between my God. He kept, he kept the heavens open between him and himself. Really. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God. My God. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. My God. We're talking about building by faith. Let's look at this. God is confirming a covenant with Noah that has already been established. Noah was in a covenant relationship with God well before the flood. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord, which means, watch this, which means that God looked upon him or with him for, by grace, by grace. And because of the covenant that God has made with Noah, he announces the coming flood to Noah and instructs Noah to build according to, the, to faith, according on the covenant. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Can God trust you to build something? God is not going to entrust you to build an ark that's going to save eight people, including the animals. God is not going to drop on a person that's on contract major responsibility like he did Noah. 
He established covenant with Noah way before the flood actually took place. He had already prepared inside of Noah heavy revelation to build the ark, my God, because Noah was in covenant. What am I trying to say? God is not, mm, God, is, God only, mm, can God trust you, thank you, Holy Ghost, with covenant. God is trying to pull the body of Christ into covenant. Evangelists, the church has got away from covenant. We jump in and shout and we're doing everything. But when you're in covenant, covenant will make you live right. Covenant will make you forgive. Covenant, my God, will make you watch what you put on Facebook. Come on, covenant will make you ladies cover up when you know you got that thing on that's too tight. I can't get nobody to say nothing. See, covenant make you think different. Oh, my God, covenant people are possessors of the land. Who am I talking to in the church, my God? And so God was able to trust Noah with the ark because Noah was in covenant. God is trying to bring the body of Christ as a whole nationally, my God, and locally here today, my God, to covenant. And there's many of you that's sitting out here right now that's not in covenant with God. You're in contract. You're picking and choosing when you come to church. My God, many of you walk past the bucket. My God, you're going to make sure you keep your little $20 so you can go to, uh, to the cheesecake factory, our, our fish daddies. But, you, but, but, but my God, because you got faith in that, my God, but you ain't got no faith in the God who made fish daddies. Come on, somebody. I can't get nobody to say no. You worshiping it instead of worshiping the God who created it. Oh, my God, that's just not covenant. We got to repent as a body of Christ as a whole. I'm not just talking about going over Christ church. We got to repent for being covenant breakers. The body as a whole is breaking covenant. And it ain't y'all fault. It's the people that got the microphone's fault. They preaching and all that old, ma, thank you, Holy Ghost. Let me be careful. We all, we so worried about the emotionalism. We so worried about the hype. But when people, my God, come down from the hype, when they come down from the emotionalism, you better tell them to come in a covenant, my God. You better tell them to come closer, my God. In order to come closer, you got to have a mind made up that you're going to walk in covenant with God. We have hurt the body of Christ because we all about to shout. We all about the emotionalism. How big the lights is, my God. How you know, come on, how how you know, ah. yeah. Yeah. What about helping God's people come to covenant? Can you think about Noah? He was the one that saved the eight people. God is looking for that one. Will you come to covenant this afternoon? Will you be humble enough and submitted enough to the spirit of the living God to say, you know what, Pastor? I confess, but I ain't really believed because belief has to do with faith. So I did come down and say a sinner's prayer at one time in church, but I ain't lived nothing. I'm really wondering if I'm really even saved, especially coming to your church because you make me think am I am. And then now you taking it farther and talking about covenant. So I've been picking and choosing. I've been on contract. I've been negotiating with God. I've been saying, God, know my heart. God going to forgive me. See, that's contract talk. But covenant people don't look at it like that. Covenant people tell yourself, I can't afford to do that. Who in my life got to suffer if I do that? Who is that going to affect I'm going to mock God. What is that going to That's going to mock God. That's going to make God look bad, my God, if the pastor do that, my God. That's going to make the people look bad that is in my P12 if I do that. My God, who in my life? I'm going, I'm going to misrepresent my wife. My God, I'm going, I'm going to make my daughter have shame on me, my God. Come on, somebody. See, see, people are coming to understand that it ain't just about you. It's about everything that's connected to you. Oh, my God, who am I talking to in the church? Oh, y'all thought I was going to come back and work back and preach, but these are principles. Build it by faith. Put number three on there. And then you got to have foolish faith. Noah had foolish faith. Foolish faith. My mama used to tell me all the time, she said, you laughing at the kids that got on the glasses and you call them nerds? Come on, Keisha, we call them nerds and all that. My God, but them the ones living, driving the S-500s and living in three, four hundred thousand dollar cribs now. While you laughing at them, they were studying. Oh, my God, their pants was up too high and all that. You laughed at them. Come on, somebody, but look at them today. I'll never forget them. Yeah, because see, we think we don't think it's cool to see another man worshiping God. The devil is a lie. A real man to worship God. Like I told y'all before, man, ain't nothing more attractive to a woman, my God, to see a man that'll get up, my God, and give God some glory. Oh, my God. But sometimes, as I told y'all before, you got to look like a fool to do God's will. Let me get off into this because this is good. Real faith, my God, listen to this, church. Real faith is the willingness to look foolish. Real faith. God would ask you and I to do some things, my God, that people might not understand. They may say, girl, why is you doing that? You mean to tell me you took him back? Why? Now make sure you balance that down. Oh, hey, 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 hey. 
I'm going to leave that alone because I want to get through with this, my God. But real faith is a willingness to look foolish. Noah looked foolish building the ark in the desert. Can you visualize that? Are you willing to look like a fool to do God's will? Are you willing to be laughed at and mocked and talked about? And you are you willing to let people say, don't take all that? <laughs> Why are you going to church on Wednesday? People don't go to church on Wednesday. Oh, my God. So you let people talk you out of obedience. You let people talk you out of faith. And you let people talk you out of trust. And so, my God, you got to get to the point where their voice don't matter. The only voice that matters in your life is God's. And when you begin to let God's voice matter in your life, you're going to look like a fool sometime. People going to laugh at you and talk about you. I promise you. Oh, my God. We talking about foolish faith. Look at this right here. Sarah looked foolish buying maternity clothes at 90 years Oh, Moses looked foolish. Come on, baby. Moses looked foolish asking Pharaoh to let his people go. <laughs> Come on, somebody. The, the Israelite army looked foolish marching around Jericho blowing trumpets. Come on, somebody. David looked foolish attacking Goliath. <laughs> oh, my God, with a sling slot. I was in the weight room Monday, and the Spirit of God dropped this in my spirit. I'm going to say it because I'm going to preach it. I heard these words right here. Pastor Teresa, down go Goliath. Ah, down go Goliath. What Goliath do you got in your life? What giants is on top of you right now? The Spirit of God want me to tell you, oh my God, down go Goliath, baby. Oh, you got to pay a price to see the giants drop and fall down in your life. Oh, you don't need all that army. All you need is five rocks. Come on, somebody, and a whole lot of anointing on your life, and you can destroy every giant. Look at your neighbor and say, down go Goliath, baby. Oh my God, I don't want to get started. Oh my God, down go Goliath. Oh my God, down go Goliath, baby. Oh my God, y'all sit on down. Oh my God, down go Goliath. Mm. Peter, Peter, my God, Peter, Peter, Peter looked foolish. Peter looked foolish stepping out on the boat in the middle of the lake in the middle of the night. Come on, the result speaks for himself. Oh my God, Noah stayed afloat during the flood. Oh my God, they looked, they laughed at Noah while he was building the boat. My God, but Noah stayed afloat. My God, during the flood, Sarah ended up giving birth to Isaac, which means purpose. Come on, somebody. Moses delivered the Israelites up out of Egypt, and the walls of Jericho came tumbling down. David defeated. God. Goliath and the wise man found Jesus I mean found the Messiah and Peter ended up walking on water uh, say what you will about Peter Peter cut your ear off my God Peter was hyped like his like your pastor but one thing about it Peter did what nobody else ever did in history he walked on top of it instead of it walking on top of him oh my God will you trust God when you can't trace God are you willing to walk on water my God some of that stuff that's on top of it is going to take faith to walk on it you got to allow God to reverse the curse in your life them habits them hang ups my God, those soul ties, those addictions, that anger, that fear, I don't care what it is, my God, any problems you got internal, external, my God, it's going to take faith, my God, you got to build your life on faith, baby, you got to be able to trust God when you, I, I, oh my God, when you can't trace him, when you don't understand what's going on, you got to do what he told you to do, Noah built for 120 years, can you imagine doing something to Candace for 120 years, everybody laughing at you, everybody talking about you, everybody say you look like a fool, you're giving out your money to God and you ain't got nothing just keep on walking just keep on building because in a minute God gonna show up and he gonna show out in your life oh he take a mess and turn it into progress oh he'll take what the world rolled off and he'll write on you oh you'll become a testimony the Bible says that they overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of the testimony oh my God you becoming a testimony if you build by faith you're gonna become a testimony like your pastor who who am I talking to? Do I got any faith builder? I don't care what your wife ain't doing. I don't care what your husband ain't doing. Keep on building. Keep on building. Keep on walking by faith. Let them laugh at you, kill. Let them talk about you. Oh my God, but oh my God, in the end, we win. Everything connected to us win. Who am I talking to? It look crazy with your kids right now. Oh, but God gonna turn it around. Oh, God gonna turn it around. If it had not been for your kids, you wouldn't be praying. You wouldn't be calling on his name. God got a lot of stuff to happen because he's trying to build your faith. Who am I talking to in the church? My God. Hey, it's okay, Lawanya. He working it out in your son and mine as well, baby. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Who Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. Let me move it. I'm about to. Let me move it. Let me move it. Oh, my God. Somebody say, down go Goliath. Y'all want me to preach that? Come on, say it again. Down, go Goliath. Down, go Goliath. Ooh, my. Hey, come on, do it again. Down, go Goliath. Down, go Goliath. 
Oh my God, is your finances your Goliath? Is anger your Goliath? Is frustration your Goliath? Is soul ties your Goliath? Is sexual sin your Goliath? What is it? Is anger? On, is bitterness? Pastor. Disobedience? What is it? My God, down goes Goliath. Come on, somebody need to talk to me in the church, baby. Come on, come on, talk. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to bring it in. I'm going to bring it in. Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 7. Write this down. Oh, my God. Hebrews chapter 11, verse yeah. number 7. Oh, my God. Listen to this. Going home for Christ church and guess. It was by faith that Noah built a large boat to save his family. Oh, my God. Some of the things God got you doing, you're going to be the redeemer of your family. Yeah. Oh, I just prophesied some of the things God got you doing, some of the stuff you're going through. God is getting you ready because you're going to be the Kingsman Redeemer. Oh, my God. God got to bring you out so you can bring those connected to you out. Just keep on building. Keep on building by faith. Keep on having that foolish faith. Keep on walking and let them laugh at you. Let them talk about you. But God said it's okay, son. He know how to wink at you. He encourage you along the way. Keep on doing what God told you to do. Until God tell you to do something different, don't do nothing different. Keep on building. Keep on building, keep on building, keep on hammering, keep on digging, keep on praying, keep on fasting, keep on trusting, stay in obedience, keep looking like a fool. God's going to use you to save not only on your family, you're going to save everybody sitting around you. Oh my God, I can't get nobody to say nothing like right that. Oh, come forth. Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus, come forth. God is trying to bring you forth. My God, you shall live and not die. Who am I talking to in the church? You shall live and not die. Lazarus, come forth in the house of the Lord this afternoon. Keep on building. Keep on building. Keep on building. Who, my God. Mm. Oh, Noah built, my God, the boat that saved his family from the flood. Hebrews 11, 7. Yes. He obeyed God. He obeyed God who warned him. I'm going to close you with this one, y'all. Who warned? He obeyed God and he warned him about things. Oh, my God. He warned him. Oh, my God. He obeyed God who warned him. God warned Noah about things that had never happened before. Oh, my God. See, when you're in covenant, God will show you things that's never happened before. Uh, oh, my God. When you're in covenant with God, he'll speak from heaven, and you'll say something that ain't never been said before. Oh, my God. When you're in covenant with God, he'll ask you to do something that ain't never been done before. My, I can't get nobody to say nothing. If you just come to covenant, my God, all of your millionaires, you just ain't discovered it yet, according to Dr. Miles. Man, oh, my God. We got millionaire potential inside of the one great idea and the one big idea. All you got to do is find that one thing. Oh, my God. My God. God will blow your mind with that one thing. Yeah. You all over the place, my God. Say, God, show me that one thing I'm called to do. Oh, Lord, show me my purpose, God. Oh, there's wealth connected to that purpose. There's wealth connected to that one thing. But you got to discover that one thing. Leadership is self-discovery. When you discover yourself, you discover the leader within. Who am I talking to? The more you discover you, the more you can get about God's business. Many of you ain't never discovered yourself. You discovered church, but you ain't never uh, discovered yourself. I want you to know who you are. I need you to Discover who you are. Oh my God, somebody give God a hand in the house of the Lord. Oh my God. Watch this, watch this. My God, Noah, he obeyed God and he warned him about things that never happened before. By his faith. Oh my God, somebody say faith. Watch this church by Noah's faith. He condemned the rest of the world. He received the righteousness that comes by faith. God counted the men of God as righteous. Oh my God, Noah's faith, his righteousness condemned the world. That's why I tell y'all when you're living right, it's all about a lifestyle. You ain't got to say nothing to nobody. Everything is supposed to be, everything is supposed to fall off, Felicia. It'll fall off if you live in something. Oh my God, that when ain't living, that can't go where you're going, somebody. Come on, somebody. And so your lifestyle alone, oh my God, will condemn the world, my God. If you because the world said you ain't got to live that, it don't take off. That. You can drink alcohol and smoke weed. It's okay. Marijuana's legalized now, so I guess it's legalized in the church. But the Bible said everything is permissible, but everything ain't beneficial. You better not base your relationship concerning this world, baby. You better do what God says do. And God is about a God of righteousness. God is a God of holiness. And God is a God of integrity. But Noah condemned the world. Noah condemned the world by his faith. 
Oh my God, he warned the people, my God, of impending danger. Your pastor is warning you this afternoon of impending danger. Are you really saved today? My God, are you really in covenant? Are you in contract? God is coming out of a covenant people. He ain't coming out of a church people. He coming out of people that's in covenant. So you better make sure that you're in covenant inside of going home for Christ church. Oh my God, my job is to get you to God. My job ain't to get you to the church because if I get you to God, you'll come to church. Who am I talking to in the church? My God. Oh my God. Let me get this to you. Noah priest. I'm bringing it in. Hey my God. Noah priest, Pastor Champ, for 120 years. He preached. You know how he preached? He preached because he built that boat 120 years. Are uh, you listening to me, man of God? He built, my God, by his work. He preached, I'm sorry, by his work. Come on. His work preached. His work condemned. His work warned the people. And they laughed at him. Remember, we point three is talking about foolish faith. Let me go a little deeper, my God. But even though he preached by his life for 120 years, let me ask you this question. How many converts did he have? Mm. Oh, that's encouraging to me. Come on, Pastor. Because I know I'm preaching, thus says the Lord, that going over Christ church. Noah preached for a dollar and a 20. Come on, somebody. But how many converts did he have? How many converts did he have? Come on now. Oh, let me, let me, let me bring it. Let me bring it. He, he, he. Noah had an audience that numbered in the tens or even the hundreds of thousands, mm. but they did not respond in repentance. Mm. I can imagine that Noah was laughed at. I can hear them yelling, hey, Noah, what did God say to you today? Yeah. Remember, he's yeah, building yeah, yeah, yeah. He's carrying on a great yeah, work event. Yeah, yeah. He's building it. He's looking like a fool. Come on, somebody. He's hammering. And keep in mind, the people at that time ain't never seen no rain. They didn't even know what he was building. They was carrying on. My God, the Bible says they was building and they was partying. Oh, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm coming. I'm coming, my God. They was partying. New Testament, my God, the book of Matthew, they was partying. They was kicking it right up into the day of Noah. Of Noah's. And they went into the boat. All those that was partying and kicking it and laughing and partying and kicking it. I'm redundant partying and kicking it. My God, not paying attention to the warning. The Bible says that God gave warning before destruction. How many warnings has God given you? God has given you a warning this afternoon. What you going to do with it? As soon as I get the altar call, you know, you're going to walk out. My God, that's okay. I pray for your soul, baby. But I'm encouraged because Noah had 100,000 member church. My God. And they still wouldn't repent. Only eight people. So there's a remnant of people that's still in love with God. There's still a remnant of people that have not bowed. They need to bow all. Mother, still a remnant of people that still got a yes down in their soul. Jesus said I got 7,000 people, my God, who has not submitted to the Baals. Oh my God, who ain't got no idols that got a real yes down in their soul, my God. Don't leave up at the church, my God, not being in right position with the king. I can imagine them questioning. Watch this, watch this. Hey, Noah, what did God say to you today? They mocking him, my God. I can hear them questioning God's word just like the serpent did. Watch this. Did God really say that, Noah? Hmm. Are you sure God told you to build a boat? A boat? What is a boat? <laughs> and then if they had any understanding, a cognitive understanding of my God, who am I got revelation of a boat, then how's it gonna move? You talking about a boat that's 450 feet long, three stories high. It was a monster. It wasn't no fishing boat that Pastor Champ and Tinder them fish on. You talking about a major ship. You talking about them ships y'all be taking, y'all be taking cruises on, my God. Imagine a th uh, 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 three of them. Titan oh my god and that was still too little my god it was bigger than a Titanic you talking about three football fields come on hundred yards three football foot four football fields them ships and boats that you've been on that was a that was that was a mouse compared to the boat that Noah built can you imagine the massive whoo the massive whoo structure my god the massive work my, my, that went my, into my, that my, my, my. they couldn't understand but why are they laughing while they partying and drinking, the Bible says in the New Testament, Noah's building, Noah's staying obedient, Noah's trusting, Noah got foolish faith. Oh my God, but Noah was building and not knowing only eight gonna be saved. Mm. I'm preaching. Come I don't on, know how sir. many gonna be really saved. Come on, sir. I don't know how many going on to see what the end of a saved life gonna be. But as a pastor, as I bring it in for a close, I pray that every last one of us, just because I'm a pastor don't mean I'm going in. I'm going in because of what Christ done for me. And I know what I live outside of the pool pit. Come on, I told y'all, my God, I'll focus more on who I am outside of the church than who I am in the church. Your lifestyle matters. You don't get to run around and have bitches sin and think that it's all good. Yes, God will forgive you. I'm not condemning nobody, but God is still calling. The Bible says that Noah was a preacher of righteousness. He was a preacher of holiness, my God. You and I don't get to justify our simple lives be careful be careful be careful many are called but few are chosen my 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 did Noah Noah did God really say that the serpent 
as Noah preached the word, as I said, by his lifestyle. As I close, I want you to notice that God does not remove Noah and his family from the judgment that was coming. God let him know that judgment is coming, but God didn't take him out of the world. <laughs> Boy, this is heavy. They too, Noah and his eight, must endure the judgment. But God is saying to the body of Christ, God will ensure, like he did, Noah, that though I'm judging the world, you will not be destroyed. Out of hundreds of thousands of people, only eight people were saved. Noah was able to save those eight because of his faith. Somebody's dependent on your faith. Noah's family was saved because of Noah's obedience. Ooh. His, his, his daughter-in-laws, his come children, on, come on, come on. his grandchildren, whatever, all eight, however, whoever and what it was, in a, they was able to be saved, woman of God, because of his faith. Who is dependent on your faith? Eight people were saved by one man's faith. That don't sound like a lot. And the reason why it was only eight, because hundreds of thousands of people rejected the warning of God. Like many of us is doing today, all around the country. We have told ourselves that I'm up under grace, I'm secure, I don't have to move to contract, I mean covenant, I can do what I want. Evangelists, when you hit the pulpit, you tell the people of Christ everywhere, God is a God of covenant. God is not interested in contract. You're on contract in Egypt, but when you get to the uh, when you get to the wilderness and start moving to the promised land, God is trying to move you to covenant. He'll grace you on contract when you first get saved, because you don't know no better. But after you know better, it's time to move from contract to covenant. 